Yeah, Shades. And uh, speaking of hockey talk, why don't we dive right into the Rangers? Uh, we'll yeah. talk about the first game. I mean, there's only been two games so far, but we'll, we'll jump into the first game. And it wasn't a good one, Shades. And uh, like we were saying yesterday, we were joking around. I was like, thank God we waited till after the second game to record because, wow, that first game was bad. Yeah, it wasn't good. Uh, it might have been like the worst game since the bubble. I mean, uh, well, even I mean like there all was last only year. One. Uh, to, yeah. <laughs> At that point, there was Pretty only much. one. <laughs> yeah. But even last year, I don't remember being that bad. Island is a really good team, but – I mean, to get blown out for nothing, like if they're not playing for so long, you get it because a lot of fatigue and, and have not, have not fatigued, but not playing for a while and you kind of get stuck in a rut, but um, yeah. they really showed up the second game. Yeah. yeah. Just the, you, you, and on the negatives, just because we have to talk about them. Kevin Rooney, he got into a accidental collision with Ross Johnston. He's going to be out f- until further notice. That didn't look too good, unfortunately. And he was probably one of the better ranger players throughout that game and then of course the unsportsmanlike conduct and penalties to tony d'angelo who was subsequently scratched for the second game because of them yeah and and just to even touch more on the first game it's i mean obviously we didn't have our legs but we gave up you know a two goal lead within the first five minutes and that's never good against the islanders because we know of their defensive system. Uh, Yeah. But the the Rangers really just didn't have their legs in that first game. And like you said, Woj, they kind of look like they did when they were in the bubble against Carolina, just nobody was, it didn't look like anybody was skating. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, uh, the only positive, I guess, is that, you know, it was was Lafreniere's and and Miller's first game, but I don't know if that was too much of a positive to get blown out, but. One of the positives I think was actually, I'm surprised how cool the chase logo looks on the helmet. (laughs) <laughs> that is actually that. Re- that actually is really true out of all the helmets cool. i will say the chase the chase one doesn't bother me that bad the, so the cool rangers got that right uh nashville's bridgestone one which is like a red and black b on it which like you look at the team like if it, like if you didn't know they're doing ads you'd look at it and be like was this a logo when did they start using this yeah for sure and just i feel like the uh the defense in that first game too just they were in we, there was really no defense. I mean, obviously Johnson, he didn't start off his uh, Rangers debut too well. Uh, Shades, you already mentioned D'Angelo, but even uh, Miller, you know, it was his first game, so we could give him the pass. But and he definitely stepped it up in the second game too, for sure. But yeah, it would, uh, it wasn't a good start, but we actually, you know, we managed to rebound in game two, winning at five nothing. Yeah, no, they. And like you just said, winning five nothing after losing four nothing. The first two games, like literally, encapsulates the entirety of the Rangers last season, where it was just the tale of two teams throughout the season. If the offense showed up, they were great. If the offense didn't show up, the defense was not there to hold the team up. Yeah, and especially the the top six for us, they they definitely were not there in in game one, and I think we're going to need them to show up because I don't know if we are going to get that depth scoring, but it was nice to see, you know, the third line stepping up in, in the second game as well. Um, they did make a couple lineup changes, dropping Kako off that second line. And you mentioned the Rooney injury. So that ended up bringing uh, Phil DiGiuseppe into the lineup. And that was actually a nice addition to the lineup. I thought. Yeah. The Italian style and uh, Phil DiGiuseppe. If only I had an Italian flag, like, right here, then we'd be living. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I was going to say, the I'm... one thing that you notice right away, like, I, I hate to, like, be critical, but Biku was, like, kind of invisible that, that first game. That second game, though, like, right off the jump, you could see how hard he was forechecking, which led to uh, Pooch's goal. Yeah. That's pretty I mean, good. everybody – yeah, it was it – was... Like Shade said, uh, I mean, it was like two opposite teams. I mean, even defensively, uh, Jacob Trubo probably played one of the better games I've seen him play in a Rangers uniform. And Shades with Tony D'Angelo out of the lineup, they ended up bringing Brendan Smith back into the lineup. And I honestly don't think we could ask for a better performance from Smith. That was probably one of his better performances as a Ranger, I thought, as well. Yeah, the Um, one that like the two main things that I think really jolted the team was – First off, I'm giving Quinn full credit for these two decisions, and they ended up being the right decisions. One, moving Lafreniere up to the line to play with Panarin. That line was just money all night. And 
going into the season, I was not a fan of breaking up uh, Ryan Lindgren and Adam Fox, but putting Lindgren with Truba that second game, if they continue to do that, I am all for that pairing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that – I mean, I felt like everybody kind of had a – not – they didn't. They weren't thinking that that Tony D'Angelo and Johnson line was going to be a good line, and I think they were pretty much right on. That. Yeah, yeah. I think we all were pretty much right on that not being. That just sounded like a disaster of a line, and obviously we saw what unfolded in the first game. But yeah, I agree with you, Shades. Adding Lingren with Trubo was a great pair because I felt like it actually even sparked up Trubo a little bit. We saw him even going after guys after whistles, and just we know Lingren's going to get. <laughs> sticked in the face and be bleeding because that's just what he does every game. Every game. Every, yeah, every I, game, death taxes and Lindgren getting hit in the face by something. <laughs> yeah, but I think Lindgren proved last season that he is the team's best yeah. defensive defenseman. So, like, if he can keep that quality of play up, I mean, he's he's our future first pair of shutdown D-man on the left side. Yeah, next to already. Except, you know, left-handed and on the left side. Yeah. So they just what they both have fives on the on the yeah deck. exactly exactly he's basically yeah, Girardi. Girardi. Yeah, double Girardi you know yeah um one thing I say like I know I know fans don't like it when rookies play on like a bottom line but uh, Miller is obviously going to get a lot better when, when the time comes hopefully he does but uh, when you have a you want to give you one of your rookies like give him some time like give him the third pair don't give him too much minutes limit him. Keep him just making defensive plays and not doing too much where he tries to bring his confidence up and it, it kind of gets shot down if he if he screws up, especially going against someone like Barzell or, or Brock Nelson or, or, or Lee. He'll do a lot better against players like Sisikis and, and Johnson. Yeah, and Miller, and Miller, you could tell in the second game, he was already stepping it up. Like yeah, his, uh, his stick checking was much better and even his confidence of just breaking out of the zone was just a way better as well. So the rookies had a good show in the second game. Unfortunately, in Lafreniere, no points yet, but I'm sure yeah. we'll get a goal and some points possibly against the Devils. There are a few things, though, you see, like, Lafreniere, like, you'd think it wouldn't be kind of some, like, uh, like not tension. Like, they're obviously on the same team between him and Kako, him being the first overall, Kako being second the year before, and not having, like, a great season. But uh, they showed the clip where – they're getting ready to go off the ice into the um into the locker room and he's like patting Kako on the back. He's like, yo, let's do this. And it really helps to show like even a young guy going up to a guy that's only been in the league a year. He's like, yo, I have your back, whatever. He's like, that's just not me being a rookie here. Like I'm I'm all in on the team. Yeah, like you said, Kako and Lafreniere, they look significantly better, spe- along with Miller as well, the second game. I mean, Miller didn't exactly he wasn't bad the first game, but he wasn't necessarily no. good. Like it's, no, it's like mean, one of those weird games where like you're not really bad, but like you do nothing yeah. to stand out on the positive end. I mean, I think Truba didn't help his case in that first game as well. He was yeah. doing a lot of pinching and, and not really making the plays offensively. And he was really yeah. just kind of being a liability out there for Miller, unfortunately. Yeah, I wasn't but trying to take a shot at Miller. Just put, I'm no, not no, trying to take sure. a shot at him. I mean, we can't talk about the second game without talking about Georgiev and also on the Islanders and, um, you know, having the rookie Sorokin play after uh, Clutterbuck hit him in the hit Varlamov in warmups with a shot and ended up taking him out. So that that was unfortunate for the Islanders and kind of unfortunate for Sorokin also having to make his debut against the Rangers. A Rangers team that came up to came to play, no less. Yeah, that was obviously in our benefit. Uh, but I mean, it's going to be interesting this year you know, with Gorgiev and Chesty because they both playing good. I mean, Chesty didn't play good necessarily in the first game, but I feel like we didn't help us case, but I know that we are going to be starting Gorgiev next game, but how could you not after that performance? Yeah. Any thoughts on that boys? And just Chesty uh, and Gorgiev in general. I mean, yeah, Chesty can get hung out to dry a little bit in the first game. Um, and you can tell that's easily like a goalie that has been playing a lot recently in the last few months. I mean, neither of them have, but um, the team played a lot, a lot better uh, in front of Georgiev. And uh, he's like, I think I, I forgot what his record was, but he's, he's a bit of an Islanders killer. Like he's got a yeah, I think he's, record uh, against them. Yeah, I think he's like six in season, him. right? Yeah. He's, yeah. he's been great against the Islanders. I, I, and after I'll that first it. game, I was actually, I was shocked. I, I wasn't shocked that he was in the net. I don't think yeah. that was much of a debate. 
But uh, it's good to see him playing good. I mean, I feel like he hopefully he can show up like that because, you know, there might be some situations this season, it being a shortened season, that they might be some back-to-back games. So he might need to step in. But he is going to get the start against the Devils next game. And I believe I've read that there will be no lineup changes for the next game against the Devils. So that means Tony D'Angelo is also going to be scratched again. Yeah, just uh, one final thought. Like we said, like the Georgiev versus Shesterkin thing, it's like we can't really get a fair assessment on either one of them through two games because, like Woj said, Shesterkin was left out to dry the first game. And then when Georgiev came in the second game, the team played so much better to the point where you couldn't really get a good read on Georgiev either because he wasn't really tested that much. Yeah. Yeah, no, for so. sure. The only the only shot I felt like that was, you know, like wow was the uh the tip in front yep. that I, I was it Lee or maybe it was Nelson. I don't know who was in front, but they ended up tipping. It was on the power play. He made a nice save early. But Shades, like you said in our recording yesterday, <laughs> that, uh, you know, that, that was, was not that was that was for nothing. <laughs> that well, not, not even that, but just what you were saying, it was like Chesty must have been like, Wow shit, this is this is what it felt like to be Lundqvist for the last like three oh, yeah. years, basically where your three? team kind of doesn't show. Well, I'm not even longer than 15. that, but more, more like 15. Yeah. <laughs> no, but especially the last couple of years where, you know, it's like basically two different teams showing up every night. So I think, I think Shesty will be fine. I'm not, I'm not really concerned about, about him, to be honest. Woj, what are your final thoughts on the first two games? Uh, it's going to be, it's a shortened season, but it's going to be a long one. You're playing everybody in the division eight times. And uh, you know, these teams are really competitive, especially in the, this division. I think it might be one of the better ones, if not the best. Um, but there's going to be a lot of tests. I mean, this team obviously isn't isn't ready. I think they got another year, year and a half, until they're, they're fully competitive. Uh, once you get a full, solid fourth line down, like something like the, the Bruins have had an awesome fourth line all, all the last few years and the Islanders had a really good fourth line last year, which is why they can go, go so far. Yeah. No, need like someone to uh, need some stability, especially uh, in their, in your depth. Yeah. Yeah. No, like you said, I, th- I also think this team is a year away because uh, you know, cap restraints, dead cap money on the books. I think we'll be in a better position next year, both in terms of financial situations and just on the ice, being able to acquire better players. Yeah. Like Dubois will be a ranger. Hey, that would be nice. I would, I'm, I'm game. I'd go for it. I like him. So I think he's a good player, especially for how young he is. So, yeah. Yeah. And especially at the value that he's at right now as well, just to add, he's like on a two year, uh, $5 million a year deal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Starting this year. He's a guy that would be perfect on this current Rangers team. Yeah. I mean, look, you have Panarin who went from Columbus and kind of like no nothing city to, right to the Rangers, which he wants to be in the big city. And, and they're, they're two very different people, but I could see, you know, the connection with Davidson, I think he might've, he might've drafted him or well, Kekalainen did, but I mean, he was a, he was a part of the, the organization that, that took him. So who knows, maybe if he likes Davidson enough and he was really good with Panera, maybe he'll, it'll sway his opinion to come here instead. Yeah, would be nice. 